recording got cut off as I ran out of disk space. But to continue where I was before, move this little guy out of the way. Um, another North Scene cited researcher is that of Robert Asher, also of Sandia Labs, that is specifically working on brain computer interfaces. Um, this is a briefing from his uh, from 2003. Basically, these defense contractors have to give annual and semi-annual uh, reports um, to get more funding and to report back on the progress they've made in this research to um, the government, the Department of Defense, uh, to DARPA, the Defense um, Advanced Research Projects Agency, which uh, runs a lot of these programs. But anyway, this one from 2003 is very interesting because here he goes into um, using this technology to enhance performance of soldiers on the battlefield and generally and in general to for this purpose is to increase safety or on the battlefield it would be to increase the um, soldiers fighting capabilities. So Asher says here, human performance enhancement may require modifications to the biochemical aspects of the human, maintained alertness, enhanced physical and psychological performance, and enhanced survivability rates, and serious operations all require modifications to the biochemical aspect of the human. DARPA is in the process of developing drugs to enhance performance when a person has been sleep deprived. Consider the use of externally applied non-dangerous electromagnetic fields, and this is exactly what a neuroweapon does, um, to increase the rate of production of body biochemicals and enhance human performance. DARPA has a proposal to increase the rate of stress protein production before a soldier goes into combat. The intent is to increase the survivability rate when the soldier is wounded and needs to receive blood product. Beyond that, one can envision increasing the rate of production of ATP which will yield higher energy levels by natural means, will help ion pumping to aid in nerve recovery and contraction of muscles, and will speed recovery from combat stress. What other changes can be engineered by a specifically shaped electromagnetic pulse that might enhance human performance without pharmaceuticals? This investigation may spawn a new industry in which the human is enhanced by externally applied electromagnetic pulses so shaped as to enhance specific biochemical changes within the body without drugs or in combination with drugs with fewer side effects. For instance, nanoparticles might be formulated to release drug dosages. Um, then Asher continued to uh, a few words on this. Um, it is not hard to see through Asher's work that when using electromagnetic pulses to increase combat readiness, one would have to monitor each soldier in combat to increase their biochemistry. It, of course, would be impossible to do this manually, which would mean that it would take an intelligent system controller to oversee the mass number of troops in combat to increase their biochemistry. And if, and if this is connected to an automated system, then it is not hard to see how this could also be done on a mass scale covertly. For Norsing's project, then they would be able to use electromagnetic stimulation to lobotomize a terrorist with dual uses always in view. Asher continues on the different applications of electromagnetic simulation. Uh, these are the various technologies that are proposed or that are in that were in development and research in the year 2003. So we're talking about the year around 2001, 2002. 2003. Nano. Develop and understand nano aspects of the use of elect electromagnetic field interactions with cellular structures. Develop and understand how treatments may develop by nanoparticle interactions only at specific sites where the electromagnetic fields are focused. Investigate whether electromagnetics can be used as a power source to conduct mechanical actions at the sites. This is actually um, directly related to something we'll study later in the quantum uh, quantum physics of neural weapons, specifically with um, what's known as target theory, which was proposed by the founder of quantum biology, a Nazi by the name of Pasquale Jordan. We'll get into that later. Uh, bio. 
Develop a detailed understanding of the effects of electromagnetics on cells and neuronal networks, including the full range of skills from microeffects on proteins to macroeffects on neuronal networks. Info. Develop methods to shape optimal electromagnetic pulses to carry messages to the cells and neurons. Cogno. Understand how electromagnets can be used to enhance cognitive performance as well as physiological performance. Um, this is an alarming development from 2003. If they have, in fact, developed nanotechnology to, to enhance or control human performance, then ordinary biological humans could be very realistically turned into cyborgs without any visible mechanics. And it is very clearly that this is in line with the Norsen semiotic vision of information injection. In this report of Asher, in the section under brain-machine interfaces, he sees the applications of this technology to mass control of automobile drivers or air traffic controllers. Again, we see the convergence with radar in this technology, as many civilian complaints of neural weapons abuse. There are many statements related to being stalked by vehicles on the road. Uh, Asher writes, The DARPA program could be extended to include a broader range of potential impact by including the possibility of other applications, learning and training, automobile control, air traffic control, decision making, remote sensing of stress, and entertainment. Learning and training might be implemented as information coded into brain signals and then input, input into the person. Air traffic control in increasingly busy skies can use such capability. The controller has multiple inputs from multiple aircraft. These can be input into his brain in a 3D aspect, an alertness signal used to wake him up when his attention drifts beyond acceptable limits. Not only intellectual data might be passed from one person to another without speaking, but also emotional and volitional information. Decision-making may become more precise as emotional fatigue and other cognitive states can be appraised prior to making a critical decision. The potential impact on autom automobile safety is great. The driver can have quicker control of his automobile, allowing for safer driving while reducing the car-to-car -car spacing on congested highways. This would help alleviate highway congestion and the need for more highways. Furthermore, it would allow for safer driving as driver attention can be measured and the driver alerted or told in some manner to pay attention to his or her driving when attention wanders beyond safe margins. It can allow for detection of driver impairment so the vehicle may be made either not to start or to call an emergency. Um, again, I do not doubt that the so-called conscious intention of, of these developers is to present safety and to uh, ensure uh, national security and to fight terrorism. But again, we need to pay attention to these Things can also be immediately flipped around and be used for nefarious purposes. But anyway, I just wanted to point these things out because in the targeted uh, individual community, they complain about cars stalking them a lot. And it would be very easy to see how this could be done now in light of these documents from these defense um, contractors working for Lockheed Martin. Uh, this is a little picture of something Sander put uh, he put into his um, presentation here, and you can see he's uh, got the drivers. This is a self-driving car, as proposed in 2002-2003, uh, with hands-off control of an automobile through a device for reading and implanting brain waves. One last area I just want to mention briefly, and we'll get into this later in the AI and games and military simulation section, uh, semiotic diplomatic cybernetics. Increasingly, we are seeing the use of intelligent systems to model various social relationships. One field where this has entered into the convergence between technological and social spaces is that of international relations. The use of intelligent systems to not just model, but control and interact with international relations is related. The second procedure called long-range strategic control reflects a longer-term planning of policy changes that are implemented consistently through the whole evolution. The long-term strategic control is achieved by an optimal control algorithm that we briefly discussed in Section 4. In the optimal control framework, the perturba perturbations can 
controls are evaluated in order to minimize or maximize some objective functional that depends on the state and the controls. The actual form of this functional essentiality depends on the goal we want to achieve and explicitly includes the reward and cost of that goal. The main advantage of such planning is that the changes one has to implement are known over the whole time span of the system's evolution and provide an optimal solution, an optimal cost effectiveness is realized among the desired goal. The basic disadvantage of this method, method is that modeling errors, inherent perturbations, and unforeseen factors will usually lead to a trajectory different from the planned one. Um, in the AI community, there is actually um, there is actually this um, an artificial intelligence. Uh, a, simulation known as diplomacy. Um, so there's no doubt that the same principles can be used to uh, managing international relations and also domestic relations. And we could also see this implemented to manage, say, political positions. So we need to be very aware of these things, that this technology is real, it's very real, and it is out there. And it is being developed by defense contractors. 